Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Following my most recent video on calculating Tesla's auto business solely based on battery protection, we only had about 200 gigawatt hours of batteries for auto we used for the valuation. Now, if Tesla were going to do three terawatt hours in-house alone, in addition to their suppliers, then 200 gigawatt hours doesn't seem to be that big a number relatively. This is simply one way of determining a valuation of this company at various stages of its growth. Tesla's real future relies on battery production. I'm sure it's likely Tesla will achieve level five autonomy, but even so, it's redundant if they don't have enough batteries to make enough cars in the first place. Same with robotaxis. They will need the batteries to produce the cars. And although robotaxis are somewhat of a wild card, the auto sales alone are profitable enough to make the share price rocket. Let's run this model again with a number that when Tesla's autos and battery production have reached a somewhat more mature number and see if we can work out what the stock price might be at that stage. Therefore, I would like to use this model by placing in a 500 gigawatt hour of batteries for autos. When Tesla will reach this level of batteries is another story. We might speculate around 2025 or 2026, but once we have the answers as to what the company is then worth, then it will be all about following and calculating when Tesla are able to achieve these numbers. If you wanted to know how this model works, then click on the link above to see the previous video. Just to be clear, we're not talking about Tesla having a total of 500 gigawatt hours of battery supply. We're saying 500 gigawatt hours solely for the autos. We're also not factoring in robotaxis as we don't want to rely on valuations from the chances of robotaxis actually coming to fruition. This is the same model as I used before. You can download it from the same link too. I've included that in the description below. We're just making some alterations. By this stage, I would say it most likely that Tesla would have replaced all their models with 4680 batteries and sell to vehicle integration. Tesla would have possibly discovered many other cost saving manufacturing techniques by this stage too. As a result, I've reduced the necessary battery sizes required. And I've also reduced the average prices by about 10%. The price reduction is due to the savings that Tesla would have created in manufacturing and technology by this stage along with possibly needing to increase demand somewhat by making their vehicles more affordable. At this stage, I think Model S and X are going to be approximately 150,000 units a year, which would equate to 2% of their total sales. I believe Model 3 would still be very popular at 21%, but Model Y a bigger seller at 28%, around a third more sales. Cybertruck should be in full production and possibly with a European version launched too, accounting for over half a million sales at around 8% of sales. Remember, Cybertrucks are quite heavy in battery consumption. The semi-truck should have made some decent progress at over 70,000 sales a year, but still just 1% of vehicle sales. Bear in mind, every semi sold requires the same battery capacity as about 15 Model 2s, which could be viewed as 15 more robotaxis to go around. The Roadster is just a fun car, but not intended to be a big seller, but I'm going to give it just over 20,000 sales a year, as I believe it will be a very popular sports car. It truly is something special in a breed of its own. But when we're at this stage, I think the Model 2 is going to be the biggest seller with a starting price point of around $25,000. It's just too cheap to pass up. Due to its low battery supply, it's the quickest way to get potential robotaxis out there, if that's the objective. So I'm guessing Model 2 could account for 38% of all Tesla sales at this stage. By the time Tesla hit 500 gigawatt hours for autos, the Model 2 factory should be ramped up enough to meet this number. Personally, I think the factory will eventually have a capacity of 5 million, but believe it or not, even with half a terawatt hours of batteries for autos, Tesla is still battery constrained. And then I have also included the Tesla van as well, as it has been officially discussed and could possibly be in production at this stage, although I'm not going to give a big proportion of sales, just 2%, so it won't have much impact on our numbers really either way. Due to all these extra manufacturing techniques, it's highly probable Tesla have reached something like a 40% profit margin even despite lowering prices. I've seen some models with above 50%, but I think 35% should be sufficient and a number I feel comfortable with. And bear in mind, this doesn't include FSD yet either. The reason margins get affected is competitors enter the market, but Tesla has too many barriers to entry. Even the largest auto manufacturers can't compete or come close on price. The only other reason for margins to drop would be to meet demand if the prices are too high but we've already identified that issue by dropping the prices to meet said demand. Not to mention all the extra features we would expect to see by this stage. 
So this comes in at about seven and a half million sales a year. In other words, Tesla is going to have to achieve 500 gigawatt hours of batteries allocated for auto production in order to reach about seven and a half million vehicle sales. So if you're wondering when Tesla are able to reach this level of output, you simply need to follow the battery production and supply, which is something I continually say, and will keep saying, as it's the number one way to value this company's future. Sure, some of you think it's all about robotaxis and FSD, but unless you're an AI programmer yourself, then you probably don't have as good an idea to just how soon that will come to fruition. Sure, it looks like tests are close with the beta version, but it's still hard to identify how much further there is to go. However, with battery manufacturing, it's quite simple. You just have to see the factories and the output. If Tesla have battery lines making batteries, then those batteries just plug into the rest of the business. And with our models, we can estimate how much value they bring to the stock price. Again, hence why I decided to make models based on battery supply. And sure, we don't know the proportion of battery supply Tesla will allocate to the energy business for battery storage. But on the other hand, the batteries and energy are going to be at a similar profitability per kilowatt hour as autos anyway. So in regards of valuing relative to battery supply, it's not so important. It's just that autos also get to add on FSD and of course the opportunity cost of being in the potential robotaxi network. Tesla also want to secure their market share of EVs with early adoption. Although there is no competition coming currently, they still want to really corner the market and get more Teslas on the road feeding into their neural network. With 7.5 million cars, we're actually down to an average selling price of just $41,000, which does feel quite low. It's mainly due to the Model 2 sales. Either way, I do like erring on the side of conservatism. Sometimes I don't know why I even say that, because all these numbers I come up with always seem to be highly conservative. I guess to try and tone it down just a little bit. Anyway, that takes us to $300 billion in revenue. Getting big, well, let's see if that checks out. There are around 70 to 75 million global annual car sales. So at this stage, Tesla has reached a 10% market share. The global car and automotive sales industry is $3.1 trillion a year. So 10% of that is $300 billion. So wow, our numbers seem to track exactly with the industry average. I'm very happy with that. It's good to create as many feedback loops as we can to make sure we don't go off any tangents and keep our numbers realistic. Now, with our 35% margin, we're hitting over a substantial $100 billion gross profit, which is absolutely amazing. And let's not forget our FSD. It's likely by this stage FSD has risen in price and also likely level five autonomy has been reached, but I'm just gonna keep it at $10,000 still. I'm going to give it a 15% adoption rate and have deferred revenue at 30% now. This comes to nearly $8 billion more gross profit. If that still seems a little low, well, bear in mind, if Tesla kept all the revenue and we had a 50% adoption rate and the price was $20,000, then it would actually be over $70 million gross profit. So there is far more potential there than perhaps I let on. I'm gonna give Tesla an OPEX of $20 billion. Now, in my opinion, that is an insane amount to be spending. I shouldn't have thought it should be that much higher I would have thought Tesla are already spending everything they would need to on R&D, given the current market cap they have. I believe they spend money very efficient. They aren't the type of company that just throws money at a problem, much like we are seeing with some other legacy automakers saying they'll spend $50 billion or so on transitioning over to EVs. If you feel this number is too low though, then by all means, adjust it for your own model. And we'll keep the tax rate at 21% for now. But I don't think this is that important as I think Tesla will be reinvesting these profits anyway. As you may have noticed, I've excluded all capital expenses from this model, as I believe this will detract from our valuation. This might also be the reason you think my PE ratio is lower than it should be, because we aren't including CapEx. That brings us to a net profit of $74 billion, which is about one third higher than Apple's. This is also just autos, remember. We're excluding robotaxis and energy, along with any other new industries Tesla may have entered by then. I'm fixing a PE ratio of 50 to this, I know a lot of you think that is low, but bear in mind, we are dealing with historically high PEs right now. This is more in line with what PEs should be. And by this stage, we're hopefully well past COVID and the economy has adjusted to a normal level, which gives us a market cap of just over three and a half trillion dollars and a stock price of $3,800. Remember just for autos and just for 500 gigawatt hours of batteries applied to autos. According to this model, that means if and when Tesla are able to reach battery supply of 500 gigawatt hours for autos, then the stock is going to be close to $4,000 just for the auto business. 
Remember there's the robotaxi potential on top of that, and the more FSD advances, the more buzz that will create to the stock price. And of course, energy, which some people say could be at least as big as autos. And this is just 500 gigawatt hours of batteries. Tesla plan on having three terawatt hours just in-house. So there is all that to come too. I try and find lots of ways of valuing this company, but it keeps coming in at the same crazy prices. I just don't see how anyone can give this a valuation of $2,000 by 2030, assuming Tesla can secure the batteries. But then, like I say, if they can secure the batteries, they make more money than any other company. Therefore, they are doing everything they can to achieve the highest battery production possible. But yes, keep an eye on battery production and supply. That's what it all comes down to. I will of course do everything I can to report on what's happening there too. And just out of interest, I've also added a graph for all of you to view, showing Tesla's auto business valuation at various levels of auto battery supply. I've adjusted the PE ratios and costs accordingly. I'll share the graphic on my Twitter account too. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.